Good evening, friends, and welcome back. This is the last video of Fireside Stories, and I really hope that you've enjoyed the series. If you've watched any of my backpacking trip videos, you probably know that I tell a story at some point during them similar to these. Sometimes it's local history for the area, sometimes it's legends and folklore. So if you want even more content like this, please go check out some of those trip videos. I'm gonna leave my top five favorites in the description with a little timestamp. I'd love for you to watch the whole video, but if you just want that little snippet, that story part, like I said, I will put the timestamp for where you can fast forward to get to that part. Links to those will be in the description. Now, our story tonight takes place around the turn of the 20th century, when animosity between moonshiners and revenuers was at its peak. Submitted for your approval, the tale of the newlyweds. There was nothing Jim Stratton wanted more than to make Mary Robinson his wife. And there was nothing Mary's father wanted more than to keep the two apart. He had every reason why they couldn't be together. They were too young. Jim was 17 and Mary was only 15. Plus, Jim had a still, which was bound to get him in trouble one of these days. Despite his disapproval, they continued their courtship in secret, sneaking off every chance they could just to have a few moments together. Mary's father had had enough. He was going to put an end to this and get Jim out of the picture one way or another. So, one snowy evening, he stooped so low as to stick the revenuers on the boy. See, Jim made corn liquor, and from time to time, he would sell it to folks in the community, just to make a little extra money off the side. Unpacked and unregulated. Now, if everything went according to Mr. Robinson's plan, they were going to put Jim away for a long time, or kill him trying. Well, the revenuers showed up, a skirmish broke out, and Jim shot one of them dead. Before they could arrest him, he fled into the cold, dark night. Snowstorm or not, Jim knew he needed to get as far away from there as possible. And he was not leaving alone. He made his way to the house of the widow Peggy Piggy. She was a family friend of his and was sympathetic to the predicament with Jim and Mary. He asked her to put together some supplies for their journey and go fetch the minister. Once again, Jim took off into the storm to go get Mary. Meanwhile, Mary's father, joined by the lawman and their tracking dog, were hot on his heels. Jim explained everything that had happened to Mary that night, and although she was hesitant at first to go with him, she realized if they were going to be together, this was their only chance. So they trudged through the knee-deep snow back to Miss Peggy's house. They arrived, followed by Miss Peggy with the minister, but they had no rings for the ceremony. It was then that Miss Peggy opened up a messy old trunk. Inside was a bridal gown, a veil, and the rings she and her late husband exchanged at their own wedding. Wouldn't you know, the moment they were pronounced man and wife, a sound could be heard coming out of the woods, getting closer and closer to the house. It was Mary's father and the band of lawmen. The newlyweds narrowly escaped out the back door. They questioned Miss Peggy, but she gave them the runaround. Seeing this was going nowhere, Mary's father decided to search around the back side of the house. With the snow continuing to fall, their tracks had nearly disappeared. But he could make out a faint path headed toward Mount Pisgah. No one knows for sure what happened to Mary and Jim that night. But folks assume either hypothermia got them, or they slipped on a patch of ice and fell to their deaths. Their marriage may have been short, 
but their love will forever be immortalized on the face of the mountain. Every winter, after a good snow has fallen, if you look to the north slope of Mount Pisgah, you can see two figures, a groom and a bride, with the train of her gown dragging behind her. Now there are stories all across the Appalachians of star-crossed lovers. There's the legend of Yona Mountain, the Blowing Rock, Joe Cassie. I could go on, but this is a favorite of mine for a couple reasons. I love how it combines the oral tradition elements of how this shape on the mountain came to be, but at the same time, it's not so long ago, so far off in the past. It's just near enough that there may be some truth to it. All right, that's all I have for you tonight. This concludes our fireside story videos. Again, I really hope that you enjoyed this series. And if you want a few more stories like these, please go check out those links in the description. I hope you have a great rest of your night and I can't wait to see you again next time.